It is a universal wish that children will be born physically and mentally healthy and will grow up in a better environment. Adults have the responsibility to ensure that children remain healthy. In each city, town, and village of Okinawa Prefecture, the Okinawa Society of Child Health Incorporated, a private incorporated health organization, conducts health examinations for infants and children. Japanese infants and children undergo health examinations at the ages of three to four months, nine to 10 months, 18 months, and finally three years. These health examinations depend on the cooperation of a wide range of people. Municipal Maternal and Child Health Officers, or MCH officers, receive the child and its mother. An MCH volunteer takes physical measurements of each infant or child. The MCH volunteer is a local community worker who carries out a range of activities to promote the health of the area's mothers and children. A public health nurse, or PHN, inquires into the health of the infant or child. A lab technician carries out urine and anemia examinations. A pediatrician consults. A public health nurse gives health advice. A dietitian gives dietary advice. In other parts of the country, the Society of Child Health does not generally perform health examinations for infants and children. Let's look at the Okinawa Society of Child Health and its community health activities in Okinawa. First, let's look at some children's health issues. Statistics such as the infant mortality rate are important indicators of the state of child and public health in a country. The infant mortality rate reflects a nation's quality of life. But unless the statistics are accurate, it is not possible to gain an accurate understanding of the true situation and to develop effective public health policies. Before the Second World War, Okinawa's infant mortality rate was consistently low compared to Japan's average. This tendency continued up until Okinawa reverted to Japan in 1972. For a long time, it was thought that there must be a problem in confirming the number of infant deaths immediately after birth. Until more than a week had passed, after the infant's birth, the parents could not be sure whether the child would live or not. In the case of stillbirths, the laziest people would not register the death until two or three weeks or even a month had passed. Since before reversion, Okinawa Prefecture had been told by the Ministry of Health and Welfare that the infant mortality rate statistics did not seem accurate. Public health nurses educated the mothers on the requirements and importance of the stillbirth registration law relating to reporting stillbirths. They used such means as maternity classes, housewife circles, and appealing to the leaders of local community associations. Our first job was to identify pregnant mothers. To do this, we used the local pregnancy register. We then followed up to see whether the child was actually born safely or was stillborn. That is how we ascertained the situation. 
The public health nurses stationed in communities across Okinawa did all this. Through their work, we could find out for the first time whether the rates of infant and newborn deaths in Okinawa differed from the average in Japan. Before the public health nurses checks, the rate of newborn deaths in Okinawa was reported at 5.5 in a thousand. But after the checks, it became clear that the real figure was double this, or 10 in 1,000. After the true situation was revealed by the public health nurses, concrete maternity health programs for Okinawa became even more pressing. Based on the Child Welfare Law enacted in 1947, and the Maternal and Child Health Law enacted in 1965, Japan and Okinawa began strengthening the foundations of maternal health, improving health and sanitation, and expanding the medical care system for mothers and infants. The maternal and child health law obliges a pregnant mother to immediately report her pregnancy to the municipal government. When the pregnancy is reported, the municipality issues a mother and child health handbook. This handbook serves as a combined record of the pregnancy, the birth, and the care of the infant. The handbook is also a basic reference for health advice relating to pregnant women and infants and children, and serves as a guidebook for caring for babies and infants. In recent years, Japan's infant mortality rate has fallen dramatically. In 2000, it reached 3.2 deaths per 1,000 population, one of the lowest in the world. But what was the state of maternal and child health services in Okinawa just after the Second World War? The public health nurses played the central role in maternal and child health activities in Okinawa after the war. PHN stations were expanded to all cities, towns, and villages in Okinawa in 1951 maternal and child health activities were part of this public health nursing program. The maternal and child health activities of the public health nurses expanded when the public health center law was proclaimed in 1952 and public health centers began to look after the health of mothers and their children. We gave health advice to pregnant women made home visits after the child was born, and consulted with the mother on infant health. If they needed advice, we would go to their homes to listen to their problems. This was our main work. In addition to promoting the health of children, one of our main tasks was to encourage mothers to have their infants immunized. We worked with local housewife circles, local administrative officials, and midwives, asking them to help us identify pregnant women and sick people. We worked alongside the local people to widen our work in the community. After 1972, when Okinawa reverted to Japan, public health nurses were placed under the control of the prefectural government. In 1973, pediatricians were asking themselves what they could do to further the cause of children's health. This led to the establishment of the Okinawa Society of Child Health. Although Okinawa had already reverted to Japanese rule, health and medical services were not up to the standard of the mainland, and there were many problems with children's health. At that time, we had still not envisaged the Society of Child Health system in use today. Three of us doctors thought we would simply hold study meetings and the like. In those days, there were many infectious diseases among children, and some children had serious illnesses. Some of these sick children were brought to our clinic. We saw many heart-rending cases where the illness had been ignored until it became very serious. 
Around that time, Dr. Inafuku talked about creating a group for looking into children's health issues. I recognized this as a great chance and decided to become involved. We knew we had to do something about children's health. This was our biggest motivation. So the three doctors approached the Okinawa Prefectural Government Office with a proposal. At that time, our biggest concerns were the shortage of pediatricians and the lack of children's health specialists. We were very worried about whether we could carry out health examinations for infants and children under general medical funding. Until then, each district carried out health examinations for infants and children in a different way. But in 1973, a nationwide system of infant health examinations was introduced. On an administrative level, the government provided the financial support to allow local authorities everywhere to carry out infant health examinations. Dr. Miyagi, who was section manager, introduced us to the three doctors. They were exactly what we needed. We proposed that they carry out health examinations for infants and children rather than just setting up an organization for educational work. I thought that if the organization could conduct the health examinations, the problem of health examinations for infants and children would be solved in one stroke. It would be very convenient from an administrative viewpoint, too. The municipalities would implement the health examinations for infants at ages 3 to 4 months, 9 to 10 months, and 18 months, and the prefectural government would conduct the health examinations of 3-year-old children. The public health centers carried out the health examinations for 3-year-old children and still do today, so there was no problem with health examinations for 3-year-old children. But the municipalities were assigned the health examinations for babies and for other children, and they couldn't cope. The three doctors agreed with my proposal to carry out the health examinations for infants and children. They said they would do it somehow. The first thing they decided to do was to form the Society of Child Health as a way of carrying out the examinations. These were the circumstances behind the establishment as an academic body of the Okinawa Society of Child Health in July 1973. <laughs> On the mainland, the doctors worked too independently, and as a result, their society of child health became less vigorous and almost disappeared. We decided to ask mainland doctors to serve as directors for the Okinawa Society of Child Health, or otherwise participate in its work. So, Mainland doctors, specializing in different areas, were invited to become directors and started forming the Okinawa Society of Child Health. What sort of people were members? Pediatricians or children's doctors, also public health nurses, general nurses, midwives, and dietitians. There were a lot of public health nurses in particular. The Okinawa Society of Child Health was active in three main areas, regular health examinations for infants and children, academic activities, and public information. How were those early regular health examinations for infants carried out? We decided that all the pediatricians would actively participate, so we started by forming agreements with them. We wrote the content of those agreements ourselves. Then we formed an agreement between the governor of Okinawa Prefecture and the chairman of the Okinawa Society of Child Health. But in fact, there was no office staff for the society at this stage. So the doctors agreed to let us use their office staff until the society grew. The three clerks worked hard for the society, starting at 5.30 each afternoon and working free of charge. 
They prepared schedules for health examinations, liaised with the local municipalities, and also coordinated the schedules of those participating in the health examinations. Based on those schedules, the municipalities would call up local people to be screened and organize venues for the examinations. The municipalities actually did all the work. This was the start of the health examinations for infants and children. The health examinations for infants and children were scheduled for the weekends, when the parents could attend more easily. On Saturdays and Sundays, the parents, who were normally at work during the week, could bring their children in for health examinations. The most effective way was to let the parents hear the advice directly from the doctors, public health nurses, pediatricians, and dietitians. The whole examination team worked throughout the weekend, giving up their own time. It was a purely voluntary service. We carried out the examinations on Saturday afternoons and Sundays, and everything went well. The pediatricians and others gave up their time to be present and contribute. The public health nurses who were stationed throughout Okinawa all cooperated in the health examinations for infants and children. I thought that if there were no public health nurses on outlying islands, we would not be able to carry out examinations there. First, we advised the municipal government workers on what role they should play in the examinations, and we encouraged the MCH volunteers to participate. The public health nurses brought the MCH volunteers into the health examinations. On the outlying islands, there were not that many babies, so at that time we allowed older infants to participate in the examinations. We included 18-month-old and 3-year-old children as well. It was decided to carry out integrated examinations for infants and children up to school age on the outlying islands. Then we had to consider the cost side of the examinations on outlying islands. Because the examinations were specified by the prefectural government, it allocated funds for carrying them out. We earmarked a part of those funds for examinations on outlying islands. Let's look at the structure of Okinawa's current system for health examinations for infants and children. The Okinawa Society of Child Health requests the municipalities to carry out health examinations and implements them with the help of the municipalities, the public health centers, and related bodies. The aim of the health examinations for infants is, of course, the early detection of illness or disease. At the same time, the examinations promote the healthy growth and development of each baby and provide support for the mothers in raising their children. On outlying islands in particular, fully integrated infant examinations are conducted and these have been very successful. The Society's academic activities are based around organizing conferences and publishing bulletins. The results of the health examinations are summarized and fed back to be used in the maternal and child health activities of the municipalities. The Society's public information activities include organizing lectures and developing reports for publication in newspapers and books. In 1981, with the approval of the Governor of Okinawa, the Okinawa Society of Child Health became an incorporated association. The parent association of the Okinawa Society of Child Health is the Japanese Society of Child Health. When Okinawa established its Society of Child Health, it became a branch of the Japanese Society of Child Health. Among the branches, I believe that ours is the only one that is incorporated. The Okinawa Society of Child Health also has a large impact on community work. One of the groups of people involved in its community activities is the MCH Volunteers. MCH volunteers come in from other districts to help in health examinations for infants and children. 
The MCH volunteers are appointed by the leaders of the municipalities from among candidates in the local community. The MCH volunteers participate in the Okinawa Society of Child Health's work, which is carried out under the guidance of the municipalities. Let's look at the activities of the MCH volunteers. This is Ishigaki City on Ishigaki Island. Ms. Nobuko Nohara of Ishigaki City is an MCH volunteer. The work of the MCH volunteers varies somewhat depending on the municipality. In the case of Ishigaki City, the volunteers support health examinations for infants and children and encourage mothers to have their children take the examinations when they miss them. They also make home visits to pregnant women, especially those expecting their first baby, inform mothers about vaccination days, inform mothers about neuroblastoma testing, and assist mothers in applying for several services. Ms. Nohara visits homes to distribute health examination notifications sent from the health officials of Ishigaki City. She also reminds mothers who have not yet had their children examined and promotes infant health issues to mothers when she visits them in their homes. The MCH volunteers are a big help. Sometimes we forget to take our children for a vaccination or health examination. When they come to visit me, I ask them many things. This is my first baby, so these visits are very reassuring indeed. Ms. Nohara serves a district with around 800 households. Every month, she visits 20 to 30 of these families. Ishigaki City has 37 MCH volunteers. I was first invited to become an MCH volunteer by the municipal government. At that time, I was in the process of raising my own children, so I thought I could learn a lot of things to my own advantage and also contribute to the community. That is why I accepted. Basically, we work as volunteers but receive a small allowance for refreshments from the municipal government. What criteria do the local authorities use to select MCH volunteers? There are no official guidelines or criteria. We select those whom we think would be suitable. It is better if they are married, because then they will be able to talk to mothers about their own child-rearing experience. Another reason we might recommend a potential MCH volunteer is that they are well-liked by the people around them. For example, someone recommended by the chief local administrator would be well thought of locally and so suitable for the role of MCH volunteer, so they might be invited to become an MCH volunteer. In Ishigaki City, a local MCH volunteer program was introduced in 1973. This was the start of the system in use today. Then, in 1996, Ms. Nohara and others formed the Ishigaki City MCH Volunteers Action Group. Until 1996, we only had regular monthly study meetings organized by the municipal government. The main content of those monthly meetings was coordination with the municipal authorities. The reason we formed the action group was to try to improve our knowledge of the job and promote fellowship among volunteers. The main advantages of the action group are to give us a chance to talk over parts of the job we may be finding difficult and to talk about our personal problems. The MCH volunteers told me they want to use action group meetings for study and training. 
So we introduce various speakers depending on what the content of the training is. When the volunteers want to use a facility, we provide information from the local government about which facility would be best. Ms. Nohara and the other volunteers worked on a duty roster system in health examinations for infants and children and vaccinations. How does Ishigaki City organize the health examinations for infants and children? First of all, we give pregnant mothers an annual schedule of health examinations and vaccinations when they bring in their pregnancy registrations. Also, we talk to the MCH volunteers, each of whom has a list of the names of the children they are responsible for in their districts. As a result of these efforts, we have been able to keep the average rate of health examinations to more than 90 percent. The MCH volunteers also encourage mothers and fathers to participate in young parents class for babies on delivering and raising healthy children. In the practice for weaning foods, dietitians teach parents how to prepare baby foods. Speakers are invited to address study circles in the regular study meetings held each month. Volunteers also exchange information at these meetings. Three towns in the Yayama area, namely Ishigaki City, Yonagunicho, and Taketomicho, get together once a year to hold combined training and fellowship meetings. At these meetings, one of the MCH volunteers always gets up and talks about her experiences. This enables other people to learn about things they haven't encountered themselves and apply this knowledge to their own work. In this way, we can get ideas and inspiration from someone else's experience. The meetings improve communication among ourselves, and we can ask each other things we don't know. These are the main advantages of these meetings. What do the MCH volunteers aim at in their work? So that the mothers can raise their children in security and confidence, we don't disclose the personal details we learn in the course of our dealings with them. I am very proud of the help I have been able to give in the area of child health. I like my work very much, and that is why I have continued for 24 years. The MCH volunteers have done vital community work in the field of maternal and child health. They have been a tremendous help to us. In 1992, the Okinawa Society of Child Health was awarded the Health and Cultural Prize by the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare for its outstanding teamwork in health examinations for infants and children. In commemoration of winning this award, the Society established the Okinawa Children Health Prize. This prize is awarded to individuals or organizations who have made exceptional contributions to child health in Okinawa. The Okinawa Society of Child Health, which aims at improving the health of mother and child, has developed into a powerful organization. What are the reasons behind its success? It was absolutely necessary for us to make some sacrifices for the children of Okinawa. The members of the society and those of us in top positions like managers and directors had to do something for the local children. But nothing could be done without the cooperation of the MCH volunteers in each district, the local people of the district, and all the others in the community. We had no idea that the Okinawa Society of Child Health would grow to be so large. Today, Okinawa society has changed a lot. The birth rate has dropped, infant mortality rate has fallen, and households have separated into nuclear families. There has been an increase in single-parent families, 
and the disease profile has changed. Consequently, the environment for children has significantly altered and new issues have emerged. To solve these new challenges, the Okinawa Society of Child Health works closely with various other organizations for better maternal and child health outcomes. What is required of those involved in maternal and child health? The most important things are for them to recognize their roles in society, to have a sense of mission, and to feel a sense of responsibility in their work. This is because the activities we undertake deeply affect the future of Okinawa and Japan. The Okinawa Society of Child Health is still functioning today, helping the next generation to fulfill its promise.